As you know, KDE has a very tribalistic culture. That is, every KDE developer who is found out to contribute to other projects is immediately pushed out of the KDE community. But then, how do you explain this? Well, this is Nate Graham, and is the author of the Pointiest Stick uh, blog, which of course you all read, so you know the person. And this, this is Gnome Shell. And this is a merge request, which was actually merged. So the code you're seeing actually got, sorry about that, actually got inside of Gnome Shell made by Nate Graham, which means that now every time a GNOME user uses GNOME, there is some Nate KDE developer codes inside of it, which you can make a fan of uh, to like GNOME users, I guess, just kidding. But how did this happen? And first of all, what's the merge request? Well, it's a rather simple one, but nonetheless important. Let me zoom in. So what it does now, it checks for uh, this single main window desktop information uh, from the applications. Uh, if the app is explicitly telling us via desktop file, then we know for sure. So it's reading the desktop file and search for f searching sorry for the single main window property. Now, what is the single main property? Honestly, I don't know. It's technical details. I'm not here to discuss about that. But notice the line that's very after that, which is it's immediately checking if it has the X GNOME single window property. So it seems like there, this property is the same as this one, but GNOMEs. And in here, it's explained that GNOME specific key for back, backwards compatibility. Okay, so what's going on? So GNOME had this single window property and then somebody, which is still Nate, came and made that a uh, standard, a free desktop standard. And what that means is that a uh, merge request, another was created this time in XDG, XDG specs that says, look at here, there is, sorry, there is a new property which is called single main window, as you can see here. And if true, the application has a single main window and does not support having additional one opened. This key is used to signal to the implementation to avoid offering a UI to launch another window of the app. This key is only a hint and support might be not present depending on the implementation. Okay, so if you have uh, an application that can't be opened more than one time, like as an example, system settings, then these properties should be set to true. And GNOME did that, but to have that, they had their own property. And now that property, which of course could only be read from GNOME really, I mean, technically KDE could read for the X GNOME variable, um, property, sorry, but I mean, X GNOME property. Now it's a standard, it's just single main window and everybody can use it. And that's really important. So you might rightfully ask, of course, my computer was going to sleep. It's a bit uh, too soon, sorry about that. What's free desktop? So let's Google free desktop. Is this thing here, freedesktop.org hosts the development of free and open source focused on interoperability and shared technology for open source. Um, where was I? For open source graphical and desktop systems. We do not ourselves produce a desktop, but we aim to help others do so. And how do they do that? Through software and specifications. So the idea is there are some interoperability specifications that all desktops implement or in theory should implement that helps a single application to work well in more than one desktop. And that's really useful if you think about it, because of course the Linux ecosystem uh, is going to have some amount of apps. And if that amount of app is split depending on the desktop environment you use, and it's not going to feel as a nice experience to use apps from another desktop, then the, amount, the actual amount of apps that you can use in a nice way will decrease. And if we want to be the Linux ecosystem and try to compete against Windows and Macintosh, we can't allow ourselves to do that. So interoperability specification and look at how well I pronounce interoper are really important, truly. Really. And um, in this case, the spec we've just seen is underneath uh, the name of XDG spec. 
and as it's declared here, XDG stands for Cross Desktop Group, which sounds cool. And there's a GitLab for that, which is where the merge requests were created. And in here, there's all of the specs, like to take an example, XDG specs. Inside of it, we get the system tree specs, the thumbnail specs, the trash or the mime apps, which is, uh, I think like when you open an application, know which app to open that, sorry, when you open a file, know which uh, app to you open that file of, kind of, I guess. That's how I see it, at least. Notifications and notification spec is actually one that was already edited, uh, I think, if I remember correctly, by Kitty. Oh, yes. I mean, look at here. David Faure, uh, I'm pretty sure, is another Kitty developer. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's KW. So as I was saying, and there's lots of stuff here. And if I remember correctly, there should be some reply stuff. Of course, there isn't, but somewhere something is with a reply to actually reply to um, notification. And that was initially implemented by Plasma replying inside of uh, the notification itself. And that was upstreamed, if I remember correctly, and hopefully I do, to be a standard for other desktops to, to allow other desktops to also implement the feature to reply to notification without having them re-implement everything in their own property. Like, uh, hopefully, I mean, something can always go wrong, but in theory, right now, it shouldn't be the X plasma reply to all property, but rather the reply to all property. I'm just making an example, of course, it's not called reply to all, but, and of course, it's not going to scroll with touch. But we can see that as an example, we have an entry, which is the notification icon, which contains, you know, the notification icons. And, there, and then there's another spec that uh, talks about icons and image formats. Then there is the summary of the icon, the body of the icon, which is the one you see inside of it. The actions to actually, you know, uh, click on. And then it goes on, hints, expiration timeout, um, backwards compatibility, blah, blah, blah. Oh, look at here, urgency level. So you can have like normal, low or critical uh, urgency notification, that's cool. Okay, I was not going crazy. There was the notification add inline reply, which was a proposed change to the specifications made by Kebrolic, which is another KD developer. As you can see, KD developers are really interested in trying to make sure that standards are standards even in other desktops. However, the merge quest was closed and uh, there are 37 messages about this. So probably there was lots of discussion on how to do this and maybe something went wrong. Uh, I'm, going, I'm not going to go through 37 messages, but you get the idea. So you have a spec and a series of properties, the description of the properties. And whenever you implement something as a desktop, it is your duty really to go to the free desktop as an example specifications and make sure that they're updated to what they're doing. And if not, try to propose, at least try to propose what you're doing as a maybe better way to do things. And if you do that, other desktops can see that change of properties and try to implement their own. In this case, I think it's pretty cool that Nate Kerham uh, himself changed, both changed the specification but also did a patch to GNOME to actually implement that specification, which was quickly reviewed and merged. I think that's cool. So to summarize it up, you can see that a KD developer has made a patch to GNOME by making sure that it follows the free desktop specifications. And specs are important because if you one day decide to create your own desktop, you don't have to rewrite like notification from scratch, but you can just use the specs that are there already. And I think that's pretty useful, isn't it? Now, in theory, this is the part where I outro the video and say thank you, subscribe and that kind of stuff. And usually I do have the animations, but as yesterday and as the day before yesterday, I still don't have them. And sorry about that. And I promise that this time they're coming, but look, I've been, it's been a busy week. It's been a busy week, to say the least. So don't worry to all the people who donated. I'm not showing you the names, but I really am happy. I just received 
a very nice donation that I'm super happy about and this giving me the energy to go forward. So thank you to everyone and see you tomorrow as always in theory. Can I stop?